Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Maddie, this is Briella. She is one month old, and for today's video, I wanted to talk about our birth vlog and labor and delivery story, just very detailed so that I remember and so that I can share my story with all of you. We're going to start this video right now before I start forgetting all of the details. So our story begins on February 1st, 2022. This day, I was 38 weeks, five days pregnant. I was having regular contractions all day long. They would get spaced out and then they would get close together and then space out and so forth. So I just knew that labor was near. Prior to this, I had been walking a mile every single day for about a week and I had lost my entire mucus plug. It was getting lost that whole week. And so I just knew labor was on its way. And that night, I just went for another mile walk and I told my husband I think I'm in early labor. He kind of brushed it off because that entire week I had been saying that I think I'm going to go into labor tonight and I just really felt that this night was the night that I was going to go into labor. So we go to sleep and I woke up a lot of times, probably about eight times, just with a contraction that was pretty painful. Not painful enough for me to go into the hospital and definitely not close enough for me to go into the hospital. But at 3 a.m. I woke up up I had a contraction it woke me up it was pretty painful I went to the bathroom and I noticed there was blood in the toilet there was blood on the toilet paper when I wiped and it was pretty scary so I woke my husband up I told him I had been contracting all night and that I'm bleeding so I was gonna call labor and delivery to see what I should do he was gonna have to get up for work within the next 30 minutes anyway so he decided to get up anyway with me and I called labor and delivery and they just told me to go ahead and come in to get checked out because bleeding can mean multiple things and they just wanted to rule out anything serious. So we just packed up around here. I gave my mom a call to let her know that I was going to get checked out and she goes to the gym pretty much every day so she was getting up and ready to go anyways so she just said to keep her updated. She lives an hour and a half away so that's why I have to give her a heads up. And so we get all of us in the car and we head to the hospital. My husband drove me, we brought the boys and they were just sleeping in the car. When we got there, they were gonna do a UTI test, but I couldn't pee. So I was started having contractions on the monitor and the nurse was just like, okay, I'll go ahead and check you because obviously you're having pretty strong contractions and pretty frequent contractions. So when she checked me, I was five centimeters dilated and she was like, you are in labor. Most likely the blood that you were having was just bloody show and that is completely normal. It's a normal part of labor and it calmed me down by a lot because I was kind of starting to think that something was wrong. I gave my husband a call, told him that I'm in labor, I'm getting admitted, so he headed back home to get the house prepared for my mom to come watch the boys for the next few days. So he came home, put them back to bed, cleaned the house. I gave my mom a call. She was almost to the gym, and I caught her before she got into the gym. So she started heading our way. She had taken her pre-workout for her workout already and she was just all jittery on the way here. <laughs> so at about 4.30 a.m. that's when they admitted me to the hospital. At around 5 a.m. is when my husband got home and that whole time I was just kind of hanging out. My contractions were pretty spaced apart but they were like it's fine we'll just wait for your husband to get here to do anything such as you walking around or bouncing on the birthing ball or starting Pitocin. So I agreed with that. I just started the vlog, updated the vlog, and was just hanging out on my phone, taking pictures and all that good stuff. So at around 6 a.m. my mom got to the house and Sam packed up the car and gave my mom the car seats and all that good stuff and he headed our way. For COVID restrictions, he just had to bring his own COVID test and test himself in the little waiting area and if it was negative then he got to come to my room with me. So obviously it was negative. He came to the room with me. It was 6.30 in the morning when he got there and they were not checking me anymore just until the shift change was going to happen because it was the end of the night shift and just the beginning of the morning shift so they're just like do what you got to do and we'll check you at around 9 a.m. So my husband and I walked around labor and delivery for a little while. We bounced, well I bounced on the birthing ball for a little bit and an hour had passed so it was about 7.30 
we were just hanging out in our labor and delivery room. I decided to start doing my makeup. Breakfast came. I just had a banana and apple juice. Don't ask me why I got to eat. I'm not sure why I got to eat. Um, maybe it was because I was in active labor and going into labor on my own, so I didn't need the Pitocin. I'm pretty sure that's what they said, but I don't necessarily remember completely. So that was around 8 a.m. when they brought my breakfast. I was done doing my makeup and I was just about to go for another round around the labor and delivery and bounce on the birthing ball again when I went into the bathroom to go pee, brush my teeth, and I was gonna fix up my hair a little bit. I was coming out of the bathroom to grab my curling iron and I noticed a big gush from down there and I thought my water had broke but when I checked it was just a huge blood clot the size of a softball it was humongous and I just remember that my mood went from a hundred positive so I was just like super excited and happy and it dropped to negative a hundred within like a split second once I saw that big blood clot and it just dropped to negative 100. I was not excited anymore. I was very scared and I was just like tensed up after that. I t yelled at my husband to call the nurse and once she came in, she like yelled at me to sit down immediately. No more walking around, no nothing. She told me she was going to call my doctor and see what we should do about that blood clot. Once she gave him a call, he just said to keep an eye on it, monitor the blood and we'll go from there. So, it was just very intense for me. I kept freaking out and like calling the nurse. My heart rate was just going super high and it was very scary. But they had offered the epidural and the nurses just said you should probably get it because your body is very tense right now and it's not progressing on its own because of how scared you are. So I just got the epidural. I was not very nervous for the epidural only because I had a very positive experience with my son and it had not been long before it was only he's only two and a half right now so it was not that long ago I was not scared the only difference was I was in a lot of pain with him when I got the epidural and I was not in very much pain with her when I was getting the epidural so that's the only thing I was kind of scared of because the pain wise I was just thinking that I would feel the pain more with her in the needle because I was not in pain like in my belly the process of the epidural getting placed in my back was perfectly fine I felt the pinch, I felt everything, not really, but it was pretty numb. I just felt the pressure of him putting the needle in and it was not that bad. And so when he went to do the test run of the first like medication going into my spine to try to numb me, the epidural medicine, he asked me if I felt any numbness in my toes, any tingling in my, you know, everywhere down there and I just said no because I did not feel anything and he went to do another test run and immediately like I started feeling very nauseous and lightheaded and I laid down, they laid me back and my blood pressure dropped tremendously. The nurses started panicking a little bit. They were just like frantically like running around the room and she went to run to get me a medication that was for hiring my blood pressure and she had to give me two doses of that before my blood pressure started fixing itself but during that time I was very out of it I could not open my eyes I could not talk I was just feeling very like just not there I can hear what's going on barely it was just very silent in the room to me and once the first blood pressure medication got in my IV I obviously started feeling a little bit better and I was still like in a I was sweating like a cold sweat my body was sweating I was shivering I was just not there I was just super like calm my heart rate started dropping a little bit and after the second dose I started feeling better so I opened my eyes and I asked for a cookie that was over there on my table and after I ate that I was completely like back to normal but that was a very scary moment for me low blood pressure is no joke you just feel out of it like I kept saying you just couldn't open your eyes you couldn't talk no energy you're just you're just like leaving this earth <laughs> so that's what happened so after that I was perfectly fine for about an hour and from there they said they were going to check me at 11 o'clock and if my contractions didn't start picking up by the time my doctor came to break my water they would start me on some Pitocin. 
So I tried to relax. I started making the monitor go off with my heart rate because every time I would open my eyes and talk to my husband or talk to anybody, my heart rate would just skyrocket. It would go to like 180 and then her heart rate would go super high as well. And so the nurses kept coming in, stopped the monitor and just tell me to calm down. I was just vomiting all the words to them it was just like word vomit from me because I was so nervous I kept asking questions like am I bleeding they kept having to check me because I would feel pressure from the contraction and then I would feel like a gush is coming out of me due to the fact that I was bleeding just a little bit and then I would think that my water broke and all that good stuff so I was just freaking out for a long time it was a, like a three hour period where my heart rate would go to 180 her heart rate would go up as well unless I closed my eyes and fell asleep then obviously it would be perfectly fine but I didn't want to be asleep the whole time I wanted to update the vlog I wanted to talk to my husband I wanted to FaceTime my mom and just keep everybody updated and Every time I would open my eyes, then the monitor would go off, the nurses would have to come in, turn off the monitor, try to calm me down, and it was just a long waiting process, and my contractions were just very spaced out, so they just wanted to let me know that if my contractions didn't go back up and get closer together by the time my doctor came to break my water, that we would have to start some Pitocin. So I just tried to relax my body because I felt my body very tense since I was very scared and I don't think that was letting my body progress naturally. So once I fell asleep, um, by the time I woke up around 2 p.m., my doctor was there and he broke my water and basically just let me know that everything is perfectly fine as long as I'm not having a more of those big blood clots and a lot of bleeding that's not stopping and all that good stuff. So the amount of bleeding that I was having after the blood clot was fine and he said that's normal for some women to have some bleeding. I did not have any bleeding with my first son so it was just very out of the ordinary for me and I just didn't want to die so I was just thinking really like I was just thinking a lot I was in my head a lot and just that's what was not letting me calm down but once my doctor told me that everything is okay and that as long as I don't have any more of those huge blood clots that I should be fine I asked him about placental abruptions and all that scary stuff that was on my mind and he just assured me that everything is okay and that he's at the hospital if anything does happen so I calmed down and he broke my water and he checked me and I was at a 7 so that was at 2 in the afternoon. He went up to do some paperwork or something like that and the nurses had told me once you start feeling pressure go ahead and call us in and we will come in and check you again. So about 30 minutes later I started feeling pressure but I just held off for a minute because I thought uh, what's a few minutes going to do if I wait to call them in. So the nurses came and checked on me and they asked me, are you feeling any pressure? And I said, yes, I'm feeling some pressure. And one of the nurses was like, we'll wait a few minutes to check you. So they left for like five minutes and then they came back, they checked me and I was at a 10. Her head was already ready to come out. If we did any practice pushes, she would have came out because when my doctor came in, he got all geared up, all the tools ready, and I was starting the vlog again, starting it up, setting up the camera to where my mom can see because she was on FaceTime, and my husband was just recording me right there, and they were preparing everything, and I was so excited at this point just because nothing else had gone wrong, and the long process of the low blood pressure and the high heart rate and all that good stuff was all over with and I was just ready to meet my baby girl because obviously there were no um, complications at that point so I was just excited to get her out and they said once we push out the placenta we'll see if anything was wrong with the placenta and see if that's why I had a big blood clot and the bleeding and things like that and that's basically what will tell them if it was just a random thing that happened or if it was due to the placenta. So once my doctor was all geared up and the nurses were ready to go, it was 4.30 and I started pushing when the contraction started because for those of you guys that don't know, when you have a contraction, that is when you begin pushing. So with the first 10 seconds of my contraction, I was pushing and then you take a 10 second break and then you push again and so on and you do that for however long it takes you to push. So with her, I pushed one time and then I breathed for 10 seconds and then with the second push, she was out. She was born at 4.35 p.m. 
2222 Briella Aurora Aguilera. She was 7 pounds, 5 ounces, and 19 inches long. I was so excited to meet her, and I was in shock about how much hair she has. Our first son was born with no hair at all, and she was born with a little bit tanner skin and a full head of hair, and I was just so shocked. My first words to her were, where did you get all that hair? Because <laughs> that was crazy to me. That was the most shocking thing to me, and once I pushed her out, all the stress that I had was just forgotten. I just was spending time with her and doing skin to skin with her and breastfeeding her and she is such a good breastfeeder. She, the first time I tried to latch her on, she latched and everything has gone well since then. So everything is going well. But when they took out the placenta, everything was perfectly fine. So my doctor just said, this is just random for you. There could be no reason why this happened, but there obviously is a reason it's just that something that wasn't very serious since nothing else happened i didn't hemorrhage when i pushed her out i didn't hemorrhage when they took the placenta out and there was nothing wrong with the placenta so he just said to just enjoy yourself with your baby and don't worry about it so for the first 24 hours they would obviously come in and push on my stomach and i was just super scared that i was gonna have another huge blood clot and I thought I was going to bleed out or something like that. I just couldn't not think about that. So I ended up having no more blood clots. My bleeding was perfectly fine. They shrunk, my uterus shrunk back how it was supposed to before I could leave. And everything with me was perfectly fine in the hospital. And I am beyond blessed that everything was well. So if you guys enjoyed my birth story, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. I want to make a video all about postpartum my first six weeks. I hit six weeks postpartum this week, so I'll make a whole video about everything from my first 24 hours to my last 24 hours being postpartum in the six week range. So like I said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit my subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you get notified every single time I post a video. I post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I try to post before 2 p.m. every day that I post. So I hope to see you all in my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye guys.